Alright everyone Maharib is here and as you know that Mono Geo is one of the best teams to play and is very well known among the community because of how broken and player friendly this team is. Man, lying is so hard for me. A lot of players were upset when I talked about how disappointed I was with the restrictions in the kit of Chiori, and today, I will talk about why Mono Geo is a curse in Genshin, and how easy it is to save future characters from this curse. Why Geo is not as bad of an element as its characters are, and why Mono Geo was just a failed experiment from Hoyoverse, and how they're still not recovering from this failure. Oh my god, that's a lot for a single video, but sit tight, because when it comes to shitting on Genshin, I can even surpass tectonic reactions. First of all, let me just answer those who think Chiori is going to be on standard banner. It's just that her ascension materials are from Inazuma, and her sword also needs these handguards from Nobushi, that's why I don't think she will be in standard banner. Plus if we talk about her damage potential in Mono Geo as a replacement of Albedo in the same team, she is extremely powerful compared to Albedo, so it's not that she is completely useless. Mono Geo players will love her. But let's talk about this team as a whole. The main reason why players say Geo is an element created to be used with different Geo characters is just wrong. The only reason they say that is because Geo Resonance is slightly stronger than other resonances, and Zhongli can do that interconnected Geo Constructs mechanic. Other than that, it's not entirely the case, just like every element. Of course Geo was also created to work with other elements. But we never got a character that makes use of crystallized reaction to actually help other party members. All Genshin needs to make Geo viable again is to create universal kits of upcoming characters. If Chiori is a ninja, just make her an on-field damage dealer whose normal and charged attack damage increases based on the number of crystallized shards she picks up. There is a lot we can do to create a universal Geo DPS or a support. All you need are two brain cells. Coming back to Mono Geo, let me tell you what is the core ideology for a Mono Geo team. You got Ido and Goru from the same banner. You saw both are perfect for helping each other. Now you saw Goro wants even more Geo characters in your party. You pulled for Zhongli because of Construct Mechanic. And you know the more constructs you will have on the ground, the better, so you got Geo MC or Albedo. Now do you think their main problem is the unreliability of Geo constructs? No? Or is it their inability to counter enemy weaknesses efficiently? I mean yes these are major problems, even countering the shields of Abyss Mages is a pain for a Geo team. Having multiple elements at least allow you to switch to different elements to counter different hurdles. For Mono Geo, they are just reliant on their brute force. But if you actually think about it, any Mono Elemental team can have this problem. Even if you have a Mono Hydro team with Nuvolet, Furina, Kokomi, and Yelan, you will still have problems fighting a Hydro Slime. The main problem is that all of the characters in a Mono Geo team are heavily reliant on each other. Swapping any one of them will make this team incomplete. Remove Goru. You can't because of his buffs based on the number of Geo characters in the party and defense scaling of other Geo party members. Remove Zhongli, and you lose the only mechanic necessary to make use of Geo constructs. Albedo was the only member that had the potential to be removed from this team with minimum consequences, and you can only use C6 Noel instead of Ito for a Mono Geo which is still the same in practicality. So how did they fix that Albedo problem? They created a character that cannot be swapped out from Mono Geo once added by giving her a restriction that you must have a construct on the ground to fully utilize her potential. Well, very well done Hoyoverse. It's not like Geo is a bad element. If developers try to do some creativity with crystallized reaction, they can indeed make future characters better and more enjoyable. The only reason players enjoy and love Navia is because she is different from all the other Geo characters. Although I still believe Navia did nothing major for Geo. Even if you remove this crystallized bullets mechanic from her kit, she was still a complete character. This mechanic was just added for you guys to feel like yes, she is a Geo character and is making use of crystallized reaction when in reality, that's not the use of crystallized shields at all. Imagine a future character that increases shield strength of crystallized shield and at the same time provides healing based off of how much damage your crystallized shields are taking. Imagine a character providing buffs based on the element of crystallized shield, pretty common idea at this point. A reverse Nilo type of character who must be used with three different elements. So whenever the active character collects a crystallized shard, previous shield will explode dealing AOE damage of that particular element. A character that can stack different crystallized shields and once you collect three shards of different elements, the character creates a geo shield and increases elemental damage of the active character. It's not that crystallize is bad, 
It's just that the developers are lazy. Like I mentioned previously, Geo characters are always a downgrade in almost any team that is comprised of different elements. Take Nilo's Restriction, for example. You need only Hydro and Dendro units to optimally make use of her special ability, just like Mono Geo. And just like if you can claim that Geo characters like Chiori can be used in different elemental teams, you can also claim that you can use Nilo in a vaporized team. But will that be optimal? No, it won't. But the problem is that if you will build Kokomi for Nilo, it will be a huge upgrade than building Albedo for Chiori because Kokomi herself is like the sustainer against heavenly principles. You can use Kokomi optimally in a ton of different teams, your versatility will not be affected, and you will not be forced to use her solely for Nilo. For a Nilo team, you can find a lot of free-to-play options, you can have healers like Yao Yao, you can make Candice viable, and pulling El Haytham as an on-fielder for Nilo will not just be a Nilo locked. Unlike Ido, he will be a huge upgrade with a ton of different teams you will enable. With Geo characters, you are just down to Mono Geo. Even in different Mono Elemental teams, each member of Mono Hydro is not only locked into using Mono Hydro only, you can go anywhere with it. Mono Pyro, for example. Ben and Xiangling are not only Mono Pyro locked, they are already so overpowered and enable a lot more teams as well. Baiju for Nilo can also be used as a healer for Furina. And Baiju Furina core can work with almost every character in the game. Albedo Chiori or Zhongli Chiori don't even come close to that kind of power level or versatility. It's just that if Geo reactions are not going to change, it doesn't mean Geo is dead. It only means we don't have any character who wants to use that reaction. If Hydro was getting the same treatment as Geo, their characters could have been like this. We are creating our first Hydro character. If there are more than two Hydro party members, her incoming healing bonus increases and she heals more. Second Hydro character increases Hydro damage bonus of the active character. Third consumes HP and gives damage bonus, gives extra damage bonus based of the active character's incoming healing bonus. Fourth increases max HP and creates a doll that deals Hydro damage off field. If there are more Hydro characters, she create more dolls giving more Hydro damage. Now tell me, is this the fault of Hydro Element? Or its characters when you already know that we could create Hydro characters that intensify on Vaporize Reaction or Melt Reaction, etc. Now do you understand my point? Geo characters are generally bad not because of the element, but because of their kit. Imagine a Geo DPS that does not collect crystallized shards, instead she increases skill and burst damage of all party members when she is on field and infuses her sword with Geo to create as many crystal shards as possible, and deals an AoE shockwave after every 5 hits that explodes nearby crystal shards dealing damage of that particular element. This will intensify that Geo character to play with different off-field DPS or elemental applicators like Xingqiu, Yalan, Xiangling, Doma, Kuki, Yamiko, Layla, Raiden, etc. There are a lot of options. And don't get me wrong, Geo is an amazing element. The mere fact that this element have same reaction with all elements make it even more valuable when you don't have to worry about one particular element for a specific reaction. For example, if I have Sino, I must use him for Hyper Bloom. Or if I have Hu Tao, she must be used with Xingqiu and Yalan, etc. for Vaporize. If all that character wants to have are a lot of crystallized reactions, you can use a ton of other elemental applicators that you never used before. Is it so hard for Hoyoverse to do? Absolutely not. That's why I still stand with what I said earlier. If you want to play one team your entire life, go for Mono Geo. Otherwise, please stay away from this curse. If you agree with my takes, subscribe. If not, let me know where I am wrong, and I will see you in the comments section. Free Palestine. Peace.